Hi ninjas and welcome to another visual guide of Sekiro. After defeating Yobu and opening the gate, you now enter the Ashina castle grounds. And as this happens, you step into enemy territory riddled with numerous dangers and the biggest one are of course its bosses, which this area has many. Some of them are familiar from before, but most of them are new. But since there are so many that are mainly quick fights, I will cover all of the mini bosses in a single video. First up, before we even get to the castle, the front gate is closed, and before it are three soldiers and a shed. You might have a hint on what's coming from eavesdropping the two soldiers outside the gate, and as you get closer to the shed, something breaks free. The Blazing Bull. Blazing Bull is a very chaotic boss, different from anything that you've seen before and can scare you since his movement is so aggressive and random, and he has so large hitboxes that you'll easily take damage from his rampage. He doesn't really have that much attack options, but all of them deal huge amounts of damage and build up the burn status, which when it's filled up, deals damage over a small period of time. Also, all of the bull's attacks that are from the burning horns also deal chip damage, no matter if you block or deflect those attacks. Blazing Bull's strongest attack is when he does his frontal attack after a charge. When he is close, he lowers his head and afterwards quickly gores you while launching you into the air. This does almost a full health bar amount of damage if you haven't upgraded your health bar at all, so be careful. When you are next to him or behind him, the bull will swing his head wildly at you, dealing moderate damage and building up burn. He does either quick side-to-side -side swings or stronger but slower swings, where he swings his entire body and turns towards you while swinging. The bull also drifts a lot, and if it hits you while drifting, you'll take a small amount of damage. Luckily, fire does not hit you in this attack, so you do not have to worry about that. All things considered, he is still pretty easy with a certain tactic which we will go through here. First, you will need the Red Cord, which you can acquire from the start of the Hirata Estate in the riverbank from an NPC called Pot Noble Harunaga. Take a sip and face the bull head on, but as everything is unfolding, make sure the two soldiers in the front are dead as they can sabotage your fight very much if the bull does not kill them when he spawns. When he does his frontal attack, deflect it and follow him up. As he is drifting, start hitting him in the head. The bull takes approximately 3 times more damage when hit in the head and will stagger more easily, so you can freely hit him up to 3 or 4 times. After you see the stagger animation stop, deflect the bull's next attack and let it run forward, drift and ready the running attack. 4-5 to five sets of combos to the head should clear the fight. Should you need to heal, make sure that the bull has either run past you, is stuck in an animation of drifting or shaking their head. If he is looking at you instead, it'll take no time for him to run at you and gore you, dealing high damage. If you strike at the body instead, It'll be slower since he takes less damage, but it'll be a safer approach if you are still not sure about the deflect timings. When fighting this way, you can use the Shinobi Firecracker to stun the bull for a few seconds. As he stands on his hind legs while staggered, his hitbox becomes smaller, so keep that in mind. If you hit him in the body many times, he'll stand up on his hind legs without using the firecrackers. This marks that he'll go on a stampede, and if during this he hits a wall, his posture bar will fill instantly and you can finish him off. Congratulations on your victory. You are rewarded with a prayer bead and a shinobi medicine rank 2 skill, which boosts your healing potency. Next up, we have a very familiar boss ahead. Another general, which strategies you can check closely from a previous video, since it has mostly all the same mechanics as the previous general bosses, except for the double slash plus thrust combo. I will cover the portion of clearing the riflemen, since having them alongside the boss makes the fight immensely harder. First climb up to the rooftops on the right, and sneak to the closest roof without climbing on the top roof, so the wall blocks the sight. Three shurikens kill a single rifleman, so you can kill the three riflemen in the front. Either align yourself so that you won't accidentally throw shurikens to the edge of the roof at the second throw when wolf's hand is lower, or throw, wait a bit, then throw again, and repeat after the enemy is dead. Next, climb to the top roof of the tower in front of you, align yourself so you can kill the last rifleman next to the boss with the shurikens, and then proceed to jump on the boss and perform an aerial death blow. The rest you already know. The next one we have to face is a boss that is located in the Ashina Reservoir in the front of the Moonview Tower, the place where you saved Kuro from the start of the game. There are a lot of enemies in the reservoir leading up to him, 
and you can kill them all pretty easily if you're patient enough. But we'll forget about them for now and concentrate on the boss. As you are at the root of the stairs, you can see him standing in front of the door of the tower. If you approach him, he will turn as you get closer and engage you in combat. This is one of the seven Ashina spears, Toshikatsu Yamauchi. Even though you would think he is easy since he uses a spear and you could just Mikiri counter him, do not underestimate him at any moment since all of his attacks deal high damage and stagger you very easily. He has a few basic attacks that he only uses a bit from time to time as a quick counter after deflecting your combo or as a beginning for stronger attacks or combos. This boss is mainly focused on singular strong attacks or attacks of two strong attacks together. As is obvious, he has a spear, so you can expect a lot of sounds marking perilous attacks. First up, he has a standard short range thrust attack, where he takes a short step forward trying to stab you with his spear. Even though this attack is light and doesn't send you flying or stagger you so easily, it still deals moderate damage, so have a good amount of health before facing him. If the attack connects you, he'll continue with a normal sideways swipe attack, which can kill you after the thrust if your health is low. If you manage to deflect the thrust, He'll use a heavy attack where he winds up twirling the spear to gain momentum and then make a heavy sideways attack. Be sure to deflect this attack. Next up, he has a thrust attack that he'll use if he has a medium distance to Wolf, where he will first mark the perilous attack, then take two leaping steps towards you while winding up the thrust. When using the Mikiri counter, don't rush immediately as you see the signal, but wait until you see the spear just a bit as shown in the video. After you successfully counter him, it is not yet over, as he will begin winding up a second attack. He lowers his spear and tries to fling you into the air for high damage and stagger. But if you manage to deflect the attack, he will be left vulnerable for a few seconds before he gathers himself up and proceeds with the fight. This is a good moment for the Ichimonji combat art as it deals high damage and recovers your posture a lot, which tends to rise a lot from Toshikatsu's heavy attacks. The Ichimonji can be acquired from the Ashina skill tree that can be acquired from Tengu behind the tower where you fought Gyob. Talk to him, accept his task, head to the gate to the yard near the gate walls, and kill a single Senpo assassin. Now head back to the Tengu for the skill tree. The next attack is where Toshikatsu begins by twirling up his spear over his head and then hitting you with a sideways swipe. Not a perilous one, so do not attempt to jump over it. Should you deflect it, you'll be sent backwards. Meanwhile, Toshikatsu tries to hit you with a perilous thrust attack so be ready to use the Mikiri counter right afterwards. He sometimes tries to use the same follow-up attack to fling you into the air, but sometimes he simply just jumps backwards, so be prepared for both. You'll see what he does and the wind-ups take some time, but stay vigilant nevertheless. The next attack is a frightening one as he dashes in towards you with a quick upward strike. Deflecting this sends you yet again backwards, in which time Toshikatsu leaps into the air and tries to slam you into the ground with a heavy attack. Be sure to deflect both of these attacks, for if both of them hit you, you will most likely die. He also has a perilous sweep attack that can happen on its own or in the middle of a combo, where after you deflect one of these basic attacks, he winds up the spear from his right side. As per usual, jump straight up and stomp on his head to deal posture damage. Now let's look at some tactics and tips. I'd almost recommend relying completely on your defenses on this fight, since Toshikatsu hits hard and is really tanky himself. However, his posture is his weakness, so simply learn his thrust attack timings and use the Mikiri counter to the best of your abilities. Stay awake for the follow-up attacks that come quickly after each successful Mikiri counter, and should you get that one final deflect where Toshikatsu almost falls into the ground and has his back turned at you, use a fully charged Ichimonji to deal moderate damage and also recover your posture. Should you get hit and take damage, be sure to take great distance by sprinting away and healing so that you're pretty much always at full health, since some of his strongest attacks almost one-shot you, and probably will if you don't have enough prayer necklaces to increase your health. If you have a lot of trouble, try farming skill points enough so that you can get the Shinobi Eye skill from the Shinobi skill tree that increases the posture damage dealt from the Mikiri counter. This is not required for this fight, but benefits you a lot in finishing it faster. And if you're having even more trouble against Toshikatsu, Remember the path you took at the start of the game? 
You can use that pass to get to the Moonview Tower and sneak behind him to get a free death blow. Just make sure you kill some of the soldiers and guards closer to Toshikatsu so they won't join the fight. With only one death blow left, be patient with your Mikiri counters, deflect the basic attacks, use Ichimonji when he staggers with his back turned against you, and you're sure to claim victory of the fight. Congratulations! Next, now that you are in the starting area, ever wonder what's in the well that you started the game? As you go there and look, you see a shadowy figure standing in the middle of the room with his back turned against you. As you get close enough, you will be able to talk with him, although this would more likely count as eavesdropping since he doesn't know you are in there. He speaks ill of you, describing you as someone he wishes to see so he can fight against, so he's bad news. At this point, you can still walk away unharmed, but if you talk to him again, he'll notice you and the battle with the Lone Shadow's Longswordsman will begin. This fight and almost all fights against Lone Shadows are all really annoying since they all are fought in cramped spaces where the camera is your worst enemy. So whenever you are near walls, keep this in mind. Firstly, we'll look at the Lone Shadow's sword attacks. If he winds the sword from his right side, he will do a faster double attack. If he instead winds up from the left side, the double attack will be much slower, where he swings, waits for a brief moment and then swings again. But there's also an attack where he winds up from the left side, but dashes past you while slashing and usually after this does one of his many kick attacks. This particular kick attack is a perilous sweep attack where he does the weirdest breakdance move to circle in the ground to your side and kick you. Like all sweep attacks, jump straight up into the air and stomp on him to deal heavy posture damage on him. Note that since he moves weirdly, the room is narrow and the camera is weird, you might mysteriously miss this opportunity due to these matters. If this happens, don't panic, as you will most likely land behind him, or otherwise get free direct hits on him. Another perilous attack he has is a thrust kick that he only uses at the end of combos. He spins his body, takes a brief moment to charge up the attack, giving out the perilous attack signal, and then launching himself into an attack. This attack can be Mikiri countered, so be ready. Be wary, however, that this attack has a long range, so if by some means you are not able to make carry counter in time, try not to jump backwards, as the hit might connect. One of the basic kicks is a normal back roundhouse kick, which he uses as a start to some combos to continue with the previously mentioned sword attacks. Next up, he has a double jumping roundhouse kick that he also uses to start combos, such as the thrust kick. Next, he sometimes does a roundhouse kick with his right leg, which he continues with a heavy hitting jump kick that does a lot of damage and knocks you into the ground. You can also do this jump kick by leaving the first kick and dashing to your side, so be wary when he quickly goes into the crouching position. This attack is very dangerous since if you don't deflect it, you'll easily be left vulnerable for attacks if you just block since it easily staggers you. If you deflect this attack, the Lone Shadow is sent flying backwards, giving you time to breathe and recover by healing and holding the block button to recover your posture. A dangerous attack is where he jumps into the air and tries to slam you into the ground with a powerful kick. This usually comes mostly after he has blocked or deflected your attack, but it is quite easy to anticipate since it is well telegraphed. After this kick, he will try to use the perilous sweep attack, so after deflecting the kick, be ready to jump after a very brief moment and stomp on him. When you see the lone shadow jump and twist his body in the air, he readies a combo of 4 quick kicks, which ends up finally to the thrust kick that you need to make Kiri counter. When his posture bar is 3 quarters full or more, he'll try to use the same posture recovery technique as some other bosses, where a white aura surrounds him and after 2 seconds they recover a huge chunk of posture. Be sure to interrupt this before the cast is done. Now let's look at some tactics and tips. The Lone Shadow moves very quickly, does heavy hitting and takes up all the space in the cramped space, so be sure to have a good spot always when fighting against him. And whatever you do, try to stay away from the walls. If things ever get too dicey, you can always run to the surface and rest at the Reservoir Idol. And if you are having trouble against the Lone Shadow, you can always utilize the small hole in the roof where Emma dropped the letter, jump down and deal an aerial death blow. An easy tactic against the Lone Shadow is to hit only once, then let him attack you so you can deflect the attack, attack him once, deflect his attack, and so on. He only has three attack options he uses when you do this, which are either the right side sword attack, left side sword attack, or the high jump stomp kick. 
all which are very easy to see and deflect. Don't panic if he gets distance and gets the opportunity to do something else. Simply counter these attacks and get back to the attack and deflect rhythm and you're sure to fill up his posture bar and claim victory. Congratulations! The next boss we meet as you get through the antechamber and the upper floor areas and open up the door to the dojo. In the middle of the room sits an elite warrior, Jinsuke Saze, and as you enter the room he notices you and accepts your challenge. This fight is very straightforward. Most of the time Jinsuke has his sword sheathed and his hand on the handle. Whenever this is the case, he quickly steps forward when close to you and uses Iaijutsu, the art of drawing the sword and striking immediately. And he does this well, as he draws and hits two times in an instant, which deals a lot of damage. Note that if you simply block these attacks, they will deal a lot of chip damage to you, so make sure you deflect those attacks. If you get hit by two of these sets of attacks, it will kill you, so be sure to take distance and heal before you try to face him again, just in case you get hit by those attacks again. Next, if you attack him to the point where he deflects, he will immediately counter with a perilous sweep attack. As per usual, jump over it and stomp on his head to deal posture damage. Sometimes when close to you, he might attack by pushing you with the handle of the sword. This does not deal damage nearly at all, but staggers you enough so that the next Iaijutsu attacks will most likely hit you. Now let's look at some tactics and tips. There are basically two ways to this fight. Either you deflect the normal Iaijutsu attacks since it deals a lot of posture damage per deflect. Four or five of these will get you a death blow. If you have the Ascending Carp skill that boosts the posture damage you inflict on successful deflections, only three or four sets is enough. However, if the deflect timings are hard to nail, there is another strategy. As he does his Iaijutsu attack, Dodge slightly past him to his right side, so you'll end up behind him. Remember to have him locked on. Start attacking him until he deflects and tries to hit you with the perilous sweep attack. Jump over it, stomp on him, and as you land, immediately start hitting him. If you're lucky, Jinsuke will eventually deflect you again, try to sweep you, so you can repeat the previous move again. If not, and he'll take a step back, you can simply evade him again as he does his attacks, attack yourself, and jump over him as he tries to sweep you. Be aware that Jinsuke does quick dashes forward, behind, and to his sides, so there is a variability in the strategy that you need to take into consideration. If you are wounded, run away for a bit to a distance and heal there instead of next to him. After you use either of these tactics, you will achieve victory in no time. Congratulations on your victories against all the mini-bosses in the Ashina castle at this point. Now before you head through the window and continue on, I suggest you roam around the castle as there are a lot of prayer beads and prosthetic tools still about the castle. Behind the two samurai kneeling over the room near the antechamber is a hidden wall which leads you to a secret room. In here is a light coin purse, a heavy coin purse, and in the chest, a prayer bead. If you jump down from the walkway and to the bottom floor and death blow the samurai there, you can move past them to a treasure chest that contains the Sambimaru prosthetic tool. Move even further outside the castle to the old grave idol. Looking down here, you see a hole on the roof, and if you drop down to this room, you will find Black Hat Badger, who sells you both the Iron Fortress prosthetic tool for 1,600 sen and the anti-air death blow technique for 1,200 sen. At the castle gate, if you jump from the bridge to the left and grapple to the other side, you see two soldiers speaking at the bridge leading to the abandoned dungeon. Eavesdrop what they have to say to hear about the technique you will be using in the future, and then dispatch them to get the gatehouse key. This key unlocks the gatehouse at the Ashina Reservoir, which has a treasure chest containing Yobu's broken horn that is required to create the loaded spear prosthetic tool and a heavy coin purse. In the abandoned dungeon entrance is a memorial mob merchant who sells a prayer bead for 1,400 sen. And with that, we will wrap up with the video. This was a lot of information yet again on one video, but you will need all the help as we will cover one of the hardest bosses in the game on the next video, so be prepared. I hope this video was of help, leave a like if it was, subscribe for more, and if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, stay vigilant, and I'll see you next time.